the biggest question that anyone can ask is what is the meaning of life? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Is there a God? What happens after death? In many ways, these questions cannot be answered until we understand the context in which life exists. In a similar way, we might ask, why does a car work? We might look at the way that a car drives along a road, we might see the way it accelerates and stops. We might try and figure it out from that. Why does a car go? Where does it come from? But there are no answers in just observing the car. To understand the car, we must understand the internal combustion engine. We must understand the evolution of technology and the control systems that allow a car to work. In a similar way, understanding the meaning of life cannot be truly grasped until we understand the way the body works, the reason why the body works the way it does. Where does the body come from? The simple answer of where the body comes from is, is to say, well, it comes from conception. It comes from the genetic processes that extend beyond the conception and the development of the fetus through to birth and through babyhood and childhood, and adolescence, eventually through adulthood. But where does conception come from? Why is there conception? Not just the mere meeting of parents. There's a context in which the parents' lives existed. The context in which the fertilization process occurred. The reason why. It's the reason why we need to understand. It's not just the parents we need to understand. It's the grandparents and great-grandparents. Each time we go back through time, looking at the generation before, we find that there are twice as many ancestors. If we go back 10 generations, we have about 250 years. And if we do the numbers, double 10 times and we find 10, 10 generations means a thousand different people lived 250 years ago to allow us to exist now. If we go back 500 years, we have a million different ways that we're related to those people. All these ways were essential. Our genetics pass through each one of these things. Every gene that is in each of our bodies has passed through that process. If we go back a thousand years, which is 40 generations, if we double the 40, 40 times, we find a million, million different ways related to those people. If we go back 6,000 years, we find a billion, 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 billion different ways we're related to those people. These billions to the power of eight. And that is equivalent to the number of molecules in the entire universe. And if we go back 12,000 years, we have the number of atoms in the entire universe squared. If we go back 24,000 years, we have the number of atoms in the universe multiplied by the number of atoms in the universe, multiplied by the number of atoms in the universe, multiplied by the number of atoms in the universe. That's only 24,000 years. Evolutionary wise, this is a, a very small amount of time. If we need to understand the process of creation, the process by which life moves through time, we must understand these numbers. These are the way that the each of the genes moves through time. These are the instructions that take the, the fertilized ovum through to the glory of, of a sentient human life. Why don't the religions talk about these things? The way that God works, the way that evolution works. I think it's, it's time we did without we can do without the concept of God. We can say, well, this is the way it works. It's an enormously complex and amazing process. It needs to be understood. But to understand it, we need to understand where these numbers come from. We also need to understand 
where the world comes from, where the solar system comes from, where the galaxy comes from, where the universe comes from. And then we can understand what it is that is a context in which consciousness exists, our life exists. And then we can begin to tackle what it is that is passed on beyond our death. We need to extend the ways we are able to conceptualize these things. And we need to do it soon before we destroy our world, before we make the mistake of contaminating our environment and condemning future generations to a poverty culture, a poverty of natural environment, 